Hi. Uh, thank you. I, I'm happy to be here. I'm a, a writer and a professor uh, in Ben Gurion uh, uh, University, the one at the bottom of uh, our former speaker list. Uh, and uh, I wanted the, to say that uh, uh, when uh, I was invited, you know, to, uh, to this uh, conference and I was asked to speak for 10 minutes, you know, I thought, you know, to, to ask a Jew to speak for only 10 minutes, it's borderline anti-Semite. Uh, but as my colleagues and Albert Einstein had showed us, you know, time in general and 10 minutes uh, specifically are a relative term. So I hope I, I can keep, keep uh, to this framework. So uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I've uh, published uh, an op-ed uh, in the New York Times in which I, uh, I spoke, uh, I talked how much I dislike the, the terms pro-Israeli and anti-Israeli. In the, in the piece that I, I talked about the fact that I don't know many people who are anti-Swedish or pro people with glasses, and that I, I didn't understand why when it comes to Israel, you have to take some kind of an a priori stance, you, meaning that uh, you are pro-Israel, does it mean that you pro pedophiles in Israel, being anti-Israel, anti are you anti-foundation uh, that help uh, uh, poor people in Israel, and I was calling uh, for a new term that was uh, 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 in the piece called MB Israeli, saying that in any rela uh, respectful relationship that you have w uh, with people or communities that you care for, you're allowed to be ambiguous. You're allowed to look at a certain point and, uh, and uh, express uh, what you think about it. And now I publish a lot of op-eds and I uh, uh, mostly publish them in Israel. So I'm used to uh, the reactions that you get for those op-eds. Uh, and uh, I always say to myself, you know, Israelis, we live in a, in a country that uh, is full of tension and war and terrorism. And that's why people are so edgy and can sometimes be extreme when they don't disagree with you. But when I published this piece, I was surprised getting many, many comments uh, from Jewish readers uh, uh, some of them were uh, very supportive, some of them were uh, very uh, uh, vehement, you know, but none of them dealt with the argument. The feeling that I had was as if I turned into some kind of a, a, a basketball team, that I have some fans who support me unconditionally, and on the other hand, there are people who just criticize me for saying something that they uh, recognize as belonging to the other camp. Now, I know that... Uh, President Rivlin was here, and you know, uh, President Rivlin talks a lot about the tribes in Israel, but I was surprised uh, to find those tribes, and even in some senses in a more extreme way, among the North American Jews. Those uh, people who basically uh, support some kind of an, an idea in almost kind of a, a religious way, uh, and they trying to recognize those who are with them and those who are against them. And this had sent me back uh, 15 years ago to a trip I took, I, w I won't say to which country, in which a, 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 a member of the Sochnut had invited me for dinner. When, before he dropped me to the hotel, he said, look, I have to uh, uh, drop you early because I, I have to go to a very important donor with, uh, because I need to receive a donation. And when I said to him, uh, good luck, he said, it's nothing about luck. It's all about technique. So I became curious and I asked him for his technique. So he said, it's very simple. He's a, very, he's a wonderful man. We go, we have some kind of small talk. At some stage, he write me a check. When he write me a check, I look at the check, seem offended, tear the check to pieces, and then say to him, are you not ashamed? Are you not ashamed? You know, as we speak here, my son is in the ditches outside of Gaza while your son is finishing his PhD in Princeton. And this is the check you write me. And he said, and then he's going to write me another check. And he said, well, simply put, I see my job very much like, much like a dominatrix in an S&M relationship. <laughs> I go to Jews living in the diaspora. I make them uh, feel guilty. I make them suffer. And then they write me a check. You know, this is my job. Uh, 
and the, and the, I, I really, th when he said that, it, se it seemed too, f too funny and too strange, but going a, a lot and speaking in different uh, uh, forums, different communities, I, I've encountered a, a lot of what I would uh, experience, you know, as uh, some kind of a Jewish guilt. I'm very good at that myself, but you know, but I saw people who were even better than me in exercising the guilt. And the feeling is basically, uh, our position being uh, outside of Israel is basically to unconditionally support. We cannot criticize. We have to do the things that a good Jew would do. And uh, I, I think that it kind of basically goes down to some kind of fundamental, I would say, uh, the two brothers' stories, one went to Israel, one went to the U.S., Many times the one who went to the U.S. is more successful. Many times the one who came uh, to Israel had to pay uh, higher prices. Uh, people he knew may, may have died in a war or got hurt. He may have not gotten the same opportunities. And now looking at each other, we have the American brother looking at his Israeli brother and says, this guy, he did what right. He came here. And I had myself a good life. And this is where I have to make things even. I think that there is something in this kind of relationship uh, that is very problematic and unfruitful, both for the Israelis or the people of Israel who really need uh, uh, the, the support and love of uh, uh, American or North American Jewry or Jewry of around the world. And I think that it's not good also uh, for the American Jewish community itself. You know, again, I speak a lot. I remember that uh, I once had an event in the JCC, and a, a, one, a very nice person came to me after it, and he said, you know, it's, I haven't been in the JCC for 20 years, and I'm beca just because of you, I came. And I said to him, why don't you come to the JCC? So, so he said, you know, if it's uh, about a, a, a putting a, a money in a box for the Jewish uh, National Fund, uh, seeing a camel standing under a fake palm and using the gym, then, you know, I think I can do better. And, you know, and there was something about it that what I felt for him was that c coming to his Jewish community, he, he, it has no room for polemic. He really cannot come there, speak his mind, argue with people as we Jew like to do. You know, I think that uh, if you, uh, the process of uh, Jewish learning, Jews learn in Hevruta. We learn in pairs. The reason that we learn in pairs is because we learn through disagreeing with one another. And I think that, you know, if we look, if, and I'm, what I'm saying is very superficial, but, you know, being a professor in the bottom of the list, and I can allow myself to be a little superficial, <laughs> then, then I'm saying if we, if we look at the Christian saints, you know, they're all famous for maybe their submissions. If we look at our Jewish heroes, they're all famous for disagreeing with everybody, including God. You know, it doesn't matter if it's Moses or Jonah or Job. You know, our heroes felt that it's their place to say and speak out their mind just, uh, uh, just so there will be a proper conversation. And this is, I think, what a, the a Jewish-Israeli relationship truly needs. We truly, we truly need peop uh, the people out there to support us not by agreeing with us and not by uh, respecting some force of inertia, basically doing the same thing that they've always did, saying the same things that they've all, uh, always done, but, you know, to be critical uh, uh, in a sense and do what you do when you truly love. Because when I see a, a, a person in the street shooting crack, I say to him, have a good day. When I see somebody I love shooting crack, I say to him, stop doing that. And I think that uh, uh, opening uh, this kind of conversation and leaving this, uh, uh, I think, uh, 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 guilt who has no, re who people who carry it have no reason for it behind, is basically the best thing that uh, uh, North American Jews can do for Israel and for themselves. So thank you very much. <laughs>